Nirvana Prakarana The Transcendence Chapter 6 The Story of the 100 Rudras It was hot and humid and the bus crowded The occupants of the bus were in different moods and each in his or her own world Some of them were traveling as a part of their routine the others out of compulsion and yet others for sightseeing Among the sightseers were two young men both of them were busy in a discussion one who was older than the other was saying that not all things can be explained logically and that in spite of all the development there there are many things which are beyond the scope of the intellect the younger man did not agree each one of them was giving examples to explain his own point in this involved occupation neither they experienced the discomfort of the crowded bus nor did they notice the destination coming closer every moment as they got down from the bus the shrieks of children selling flowers vendors advertising their fare conductors shouting the destinations of their buses greeted the ears it was usual a busy noisy crowded area of the town however both these friends were too occupied in their discussion to not ta- take notice of the noise at that time the elder of the two who had come there many times and presently acting as the guide started telling about the history of the place to the younger one who became all ears as they came out of the bus station the tower of bradishwara temple caught their eyes Though there was a heavy rush of people outside, the temple compound as such was quite empty, with very few people inside. Entering the temple, they approached the sanctum sanctorum. A priest was chanting some Vedic mantras in his gruffly melodious voice, and another was distributing tirtha, the consecrated water, and vibhuti, the sacred ash. Failing to see the idol of Shiva. the newcomer asked the priest who just pointed towards the sanctum sanctorum but he asked him again as he could not see it the priest again pointed his right hand above there it was a shivalingam about 18 feet high the younger man was totally unprepared to face this and was lost in admiration it was not only a feeling of admiration but of awe as he was shocked into silence making him oblivious to the external world when he came back came back to the so called normal consciousness his friend just took him around the circumambulant path around the shrine when they came out of the temple the elder friend asked the younger one to describe his experience the latter confessed that it was not possible he was however glad that he had made the trip but as it always happens when the effect of the experience got worn off there was analysis of the experience and then even the memory of the experience itself was lost in the maze of thoughts and arguments this story is common to all of us it will not be an exaggeration if one said that almost every day opportunities cross our way the beauty of nature or perhaps a sense of experience brings in a kind of fulfillment or a feeling of satiety though it may be only tempor- temporary we just do not allow the experience to prolong as it as uh, as either there is comparison or new desires or intellectual analysis of the experience itself even the seekers are no exception to such reaction to experiences if we look into the why of such behavior it can be of great help in case of the so called day to day pleasurable experiences the mind is extrovertish and the attention is naturally on the object and there is this conviction that the object alone is responsible for the pleasure this conviction continues even when one starts 
on a divine adventure yes the seeker overcomes the hunger for objects through the practice of yama niyama but then he starts longing for spiritual experiences in this way spiritual experiences become objects of senses and mind leading one towards spiritual materialism it is at this time that a seeker faces the danger of developing the holier than thou attitude he may start looking down on all actions other than the formal spiritual practices taking them to be materialistic or mundane while continuing to expect and long for the spiritual experiences the expectation of and longing for anything is mundane as both these are associated with desire and desire happens to be the food for thinking moreover experience as such is at the level of multiplicity because three things are mandatory for any experience vishaya or bhojyam the object vishayam or bhojyam the object bhoga the experience and bhokta the experiencer this group of three is called as triputi this does not in any way imply that the spiritual experiences are to be avoided the experiences are like the milestones indicating the progress of the seeker the seeker should not long for them as basically he is trying to completely stop the activity of thinking so the best way is to avoid such things which strengthen the ahankara to eliminate the ahankara the path of jnana suggests the seeker to go on increasing the awareness through awareness one goes on increasing the consciousness and de- decreasing that of unconsciousness ego happens to be the most dominant part of our consciousness prana vidya deva puja yoga and non attached action help in increasing the awareness with the increased awareness the triputi gets eliminated and one achieves the non dual in the path of bhakti the concept of grace is introduced it is said that the encounter with god cannot be demanded because it can only be a gift and gift by its very nature cannot be claimed the only hindrance for the encounter with god is the i that is why the devotees say that encounter of the devotee with god as such is impossible as long as the devotee that is the ego claiming itself as devotee is there god cannot come and at the very instant when ego melts there is nothing else but god without keeping this fact in mind all the time a seeker tends to give importance to the experiences ultimately causing delay in his progress of course the seeker does realize the folly sometime or the later to resume his march towards non dual reality this appears to be the theme of the sarga under discussion sage vasishta narrated the following story to rama an ascetic and a man of wisdom had the ability to get into the state of samadhi at will through the repeated practice he had reached a stage of materializing all mental impressions into real images the scriptures claim that every thought has its own reflected image one day having returned from samadhi a thought arose in his mind that he should engage himself playfully in ordinary actions with this thought that he should become another he at once transformed into another then the thought of re becoming the ascetic did not arise as if in a strange coincidence he became another person named jeevata the mind of jeevata roamed on the streets of a certain town produced by a similar fantasy and dwelt there in that town he drank alcohol and slept in that intoxicated state in that sleep he dreamt as being a brahmin 
who in turn dreamt of being an emperor emperor on earth who in turn dreamt as being an erudite brahmin the dreaming continued and he became a celestial lady a deer a creeper a goddess a beetle a tusker and finally a swan the swan while flying in the saw uh, sky saw a rudra and thus attained the form of rudra the rudra with his jnana attained to the highest state at this stage the rudra started to retrospect all his past lives and realize the power of maya in deluding those under its influence having complete control he dived into each life and traced his way to the former ascetic and awakened him from his stance thereupon the ascetic woke up to free himself from reminiscences of the illusory life again the rudra contemplated on jeevata and reached a certain part of jnana akasha along with the ascetic thus jeevata attained the conscious state to accompany them all the three rudra the ascetic and jeevata were full of jnana and realized the non dual principle in spite of having three separate bodies they then visited all the incarnation being free from all stains they discovered that the divine brahman alone incarnated in so many bodies and has so many resplendent rudras all the rudras attained to jnana and returned to their respective abode on being asked by the principal rudra they lived their respective lives and quit their bodies at the appointed time to merge into brahman rama who had been listening intently remarked about the wonderful nature of the story and wanted to know the cause of the marvel of sankalpa of the ascetic to generate the living forms of jeevata and others which became real vasishta replied that everything is in chit and comes out of chit only chit being all it becomes whatever it contemplates upon that which is seen in dreams and that which arises out of sankalpa will always manifest in the contemplated form an ordinary mind cannot bring this about as its power is scattered but through the practice of yoga the mind becomes one pointed if such persons long for objects or power through their sankalpa they attain them the mind which has a taste for the objects is ignorant in spite of its power of concentrated thought the state taste is a great impediment to the pilgrim's process if such powerful mind turns its concentration on itself it attains to jnana a clarification is not out of place at this juncture life and desire or wish are intimately connected an individual life is nothing but a representation of that individual's desires and desires never go unfulfilled though they may not get fulfilled immediately and may even take lifetimes so the present life is a fulfillment of the desires of some past life they take time to get fulfilled because the mind is restless and hence weak the mind is like a genie ready to fulfill any wish provided it is under the control of the master the problem with most of us is that we are under its control and that is why our wishes are like beg- beggars horses which can never be ridden however a person who has his mind under perfect control as it was with the ascetic who could willfully enter samadhi then he can objectify his thoughts but then the desires as such drag the mind towards involvement even a yogi who has his mind under control gets dragged into involvement if there is any desire this has been illustrated in the story when the ascetic starts becoming the persons or objects of his thought however 
the yogi has an advantage over an ordinary person who does not have any control over the mind in the sense that he can retrace his steps towards to recollect the original state rudra is another name for ahankara which is free from any identification or involvement rudra is also the name of shiva in his destructive aspect he is the destroyer of all evils since it is used in a scripture like yoga vasishta it has a special significance the one and only evil in a seeker is the mind in its identified and involved state rudra helps in transcending the mind as we shall see in the coming stories both time and space are the manifestations of the mind normally when one is under the influence of mind there is this horizontal movement from the past to the present or on to the future from one condition of the body to another there is another dimension to growth and that is vertical growth where there is neither space nor time almost everything in the material world has to be achieved through effort more or less depending on the things desired one has to desire and the desire needs time and future i will achieve it it requires time as well as effort the time for becoming j krishnamurti says there is chronological time and the time of the mind the time which is mind itself there is confusion between the two the psychological time is the process of becoming this time as becoming that i will be was born of the illusion and was a manifestation of the i both self sustaining maintaining and supporting itself through its own ignorance and by this process its own potential energy as consciousness desire or the process of becoming is a state of discontentment in the prevailing situation and wants to become something else which will seemingly bring happiness for instance a man is uneducated and thinks that he'll be happy if he gets a university degree the man not having any money thinks that he will be happy if he increases his bank balance or a man not having any power thinks that he'll be happy if he becomes a minister in the process of desiring we forget that we keep moving into future and future does not really exist because of which we miss the precious present the more we desire the more we crystallize the habit of moving away from the reality of the present if the physical or the material possessions were casual in bringing about happiness then it was mandatory that all those persons having money or power would be happy we know that if at all there is anything in common in human kind it is unhappiness and misery everything in the world is achieved in time and with effort but the bliss which every one of us is seeking can be achieved right now nay it is already there and the mind is the only hindrance all spiritual practices emphasize only on waking up from the sleep of desiring and becoming as the desiring or becoming always brings one to the realm of the mind which is nothing but time and space the meditation is the state transcending the activity called mind with a little awareness one can realize that one exists at different levels both gross and subtle if one is able to become aware at the subtler level one can easily become a sakshi or witness to the gross level so the manas can learn to witness the body and senses buddhi can witness the manas ahankara can witness the buddhi and so on we have this power in us and use it in day to day life when one is seeing a movie one mostly gets identified with it 
it is evident from our reactions during the experience we are moved to tears or carried over by the excitement but if one remembers that it is only a moving picture one laughs at the reactions the movie is only an illusion created by the movement of the film at a particular speed tensions or worries visit us often sometimes they are so strong that we are unable to sleep most of the time a defense mechanism in the form of a thought that everything will become all right this thought saves us from problem if we just observe ourselves we find that at the time of surfacing of the thought we are standing apart from the problem this mood or posture of standing apart has been called as becoming a rudra in the present sarga when this rudratva or rudrahood dawns on a person every event or situation becomes like an image on a water surface since the rudra has achieved the state of non involvement he is able to go and awaken all those previous manifestations and help them to achieve rudratva the key to life divine is the sakshi bhava or witness hood vedanta gives a beautiful example to illustrate the achievement of witness hood there is a small pond with crystal clear water one can clearly see the bottom if the water surface gets disturbed either due to wind or a person's entering the po- uh, pond there is turbulence and one cannot see the bottom anymore and the mud at the bottom gets mixed with water no activity or effort can make the water transparent again on the contrary any activity will only help in worsening the situation instead if we allow the turbulence of water to reduce and allow the mud to settle down then and then alone the original state can be revived but in the revival only one thing is to be done not to do anything and wait patiently even in waiting there should not be any restlessness there should be readiness to wait till eternity if necessary it is a full moonlight there is not even a single cloud in the sky the river however is in disturbance as the waves lash at the boulders in it and on its banks the water appears like molten silver and one cannot see the moon on its surface unless the wind subside the image of the moon cannot be formed but as and when the winds calm down a moving image of the moon appears on the surface and when the winds totally stop the image becomes steady the moon of reality on the surface of our consciousness cannot appear amidst the hurricane winds of desires there are only two ways to overcome the problem either stop the wind through yoga or learn to stand apart from it through what vasishta call, calls as samyaga vekshanam or the art of internalized seeing this sarga gives a few hints on the samyaga vekshanam the art of inner observation